Hello everybody. Hope you're having a good day today. I mean, we're, we're going to um, uh, have another lesson here. Uh, day's pretty nice here. Kind of cloudy, kind of cool, but oh well. I hope you can manage the weather that you can do about it, so deal with it. I mean, that's the only way to look at it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope these uh, lessons are beneficial for you. And uh, I've got another one for you to consider. It's, the title is 100%. And what gave me the idea here was I was amused by a t-shirt that I saw one day. It starts off by saying, I give 100% at work. 13% on Monday, 27% on Tuesday, and ending up by Friday with a grand total of 100%. Now that describes some of the co-workers I used to work with. And so it, it can happen. And while this is cute, we have to think about spiritual matters. And I've been thinking just how much effort are we putting into our spiritual lives? And uh, I doubt if anybody's putting 100% effort into it, but uh, some people are not putting very much at all. And when they talk about giving that effort of 100%, they have to narrow it down. I give 100% on Sunday morning only. And so we're going to talk about that. See, for many, it appears that they try to follow the above formula and compare that to the percentage of time Satan is using to separate you from God. Face it, folks. Satan is working 24-7, 365 to find ways to get you to leave God. <clears throat> and most of the time, he is successful. Only the very strong in the faith will not succumb to his temptations. And sometimes we act as if we do not care about others going into action, others doing the work. And it appears that many want to just stay neutral in their activities and have no concern for others. Well, we should know that the enemy is plotting, conspiring, and planning the destruction, not only of our souls, but also the soul of this great nation. And if we do nothing about it, they're going to succeed. Satan is going to succeed. And it's going to look that way. Even though Christ has the ultimate victory, I mean, the battle for your soul is still going on. Uh, let's face it, yeah, God's ultimate victory with, with the, the souls of those who are righteous, I mean, that, that's going to be a grand event. But right now we're in a war and Satan is getting the better of most people. And so... Uh, we have to watch, we, and we've been watching things like this happen for years now. We, we've seen the moral decay in our society, and we've seen the wickedness that's taking place, and we see people shouting, well, what's wrong with our world? Well, we know the answer. The answer to the problem is sin. No, no other way of saying that. Sin is the problem in our society, and yet people want others to change their lifestyle but nobody is willing to change their own lifestyle and that that's the way it appears see in first peter 5 8 tells us that satan is prowling about seeking whom he may devour well the people he is seeking is every soul that has chosen to be obedient to god so that that's really not a lot of effort on satan's part he's not trying to get everybody because let's face it if people are in sin he already has them See, the souls of sinners he already has and does not have to prowl about seeking them. And Satan works very hard upon the souls of Christians to get them to depart the love and grace of God. And sadly, many who wear the name of Christ are playing into Satan's traps when they give anything less than 100% effort in their spiritual warfare. I mean, Satan is also using his many tools to sidetrack us get us out of focus, change our focus, and help us to forget to call upon God for our protection and our guidance. See, in the Old Testament, we have several examples of the children of Israel seeking protection from foreign powers. Sometimes they say, well, let's get help from Egypt. Let's get help from uh, these people. Let's call upon the other gods and things like that. And, and really, they were trying to do anything except seek the protection from Almighty God. And all too often, we seek protection from sources other than God, and we suffer because of our choices. Yeah, we make some bad choices from time to time. 
And so it also appears that for many people, the maximum effort in protecting their souls is maybe attending worship service once a week. You know, when it gets down to the truth, and what that really means is what they're doing is hoping that God will be happy that one hour while their mind is upon worldly things, the other 167. I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's playing it very dangerous, if you ask me. So, do you realize that this is just another tool of Satan? I mean, Satan wants us to feel that we are religious and that God approves of us, all the while knowing that if we are not 100% committed to serving the Lord, we're going to be lost. And, the, and Satan is happy to do that. He is the great deceiver. And, yeah, we, we talk to a lot of people who have this concept, well, I know I'm saved, but they're, they're living a lot. And so uh, that really doesn't make a lot of sense, but I mean, they, they're, they're comfortable with that. And usually they're the ones very hard to try and convince that they need to change their ways. See, being human means that we do other things, not just pray and go to church all the time. And we sleep a good percentage of the time. And we who work are active many hours of the week. And some retirees I know work quite a lot. <clears throat> and we take time to eat and do other things which are considered necessities. Sometimes the, we, we do some luxuries. We take vacations and trips and go out to restaurants and things like that. See, the problem with this picture is that many consider that going to church one hour a week is sufficient to make up for all the other time. See, that is the wrong perspective to take. The mark of a true Christian is one that we should not be satisfied with what we are today, but be more focused upon what and who we will be tomorrow. See, a lot of times we sit back and we, we read this in the book of Revelation as uh, the angel of the Lord is speaking to the seven churches. I mean, some of them, he says, okay, you're resting on your laurels. You did things back then. You were great. You, you withstood the false teacher, and you did great, but you've left your first love. He said that to the church at Ephesus. And others thinking they're okay, but he says, you think you're alive, but you're dead, the church at Sardis. And so, yeah, I mean, things like that. And then some churches, well, some of you have not sold your garments like the rest of you have. And so... We, we have to be mindful of that. Uh, we have to be mindful who we're going to be tomorrow. What am I doing today for the Lord? Then what are my plans for tomorrow for the Lord? I mean, we need to do something. We need to try and do something to help people get to heaven. And this is just one method we can use here. So we want to do that. And it reminds us of Paul's words in Philippians 3.14. Now paraphrasing, he says, I forget what lies behind, I press forward, onward, for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, yeah, I mean, what we've done in the past may have been great, we may have been faithful to the Lord, but folks, what are we doing now? We've got to set that stuff behind us, we've got to push forward, we've got to continue growing, we have got to have to continue studying God's word, we have to grow in grace and knowledge all the way until our death. I mean, that, that's what we're supposed to do. As long as we have that mental capacity, we, get, we should be working towards that. And, what, and the more we realize how important our relationship with God is, the more we should realize how important a relationship with God would be for others. So, we must realize we should be followers of Christ 100% of the time. And we must not forget Christ is our Lord, He's our King, our Master. And we should be doing his bidding. We should be doing his will. My sermon yesterday was not my will, but thy will be done. You know, when Jesus spoke those words. But most people turn around and say, uh, not thy will, but my will be done. And that, that selfishness is going to keep people out of heaven. So we, we've got to get people focused on doing God's message and God's word and following the instructions from our master, our Lord, our King, our Savior. And so we, we, can, we can keep a spiritual perspective even while we do uh, these other activities. Maybe not while we're sleeping, but when we wake up, you, you remember Deuteronomy chapter 6, 
talked to him. He said, you're going to teach these things to your children when you wake up, when you go to sleep, uh, when you sit around the table to eat, when you walk by the wayside. You're going to talk about God. Tell them about it. And, of course, we know that did not happen because the children of Israel turned away from God in the next, very next generation. We are to focus upon things above and not on this earth. You know, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Now, that does not mean we do not have to pay attention to our driving or that we are not. What we need to do is seek how we can dedicate more time to spiritual matters in our daily living. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, give more. I mean, if you're, if you're one of these like 13% on Monday, 27% on Tuesday, okay. Maybe you recognize that. Start giving 15% on Monday and 30% on Tuesday. And start when you start adding it up, it's more than 100% for the week. <clears throat> Perhaps you can get it to the point where you're 100% every two days or, or something like that. The more we can do for the Lord, the better it's going to be for us. So we do need to seek how we can dedicate more time to spiritual matters in our daily living. Now just imagine where you could be if you devoted as much time to your soul salvation as Satan devotes toward your destruction. Think about that. Like I said, he's working 24-7, 365 to get you away from God. <clears throat> and how much effort do you put into your soul salvation? An hour a week? Two hours a week? Three hours? I mean, you got to really consider, you got a long ways to go. Your soul is at stake. So take time to be serious about this subject. Your soul depends upon it, and because of your relationships, the souls of others may depend upon it also. Don't get to heaven? Don't you want to go to heaven yourself? See, the only way anyone will get to heaven is to put 100% effort into their spiritual life and seek to cause others to do the same. <clears throat> you know, many years ago, Charles Spurgeon once wrote that if you do not care to help others get to heaven, you will not get there yourself. And we who are faithful should agree with that statement. And that's very true. We've got to help others get to heaven or else we're not going to get there ourselves. <clears throat> preacher once say, and preacher I love dearly, he's gone now, but... <clears throat> He said, you cannot get to heaven by yourself. You have to take someone with you. And the more I re reflect on that statement, I know that is true. So we've got to help others get to heaven. And, and we, we need to do so. So the question today is, how much effort do you spend to help your soul get in the right relationship with God and keep a good relationship with God? And eventually, how much effort do you spend helping others make it to heaven also? I mean, that, that, that's, those are questions for you to consider and ponder the rest of this day. And like I say, do more for the Lord every day. Spirituality, increase your study time, increase your activities of doing good. And guess what? You just might make it to heaven. And because if you don't put forth any effort, I can pretty much guarantee you, you're not going to get to heaven. So put forth the effort, folks. I mean, we're supposed to be diligent in our efforts. I mean, that means to make every effort. I mean, diligence is important. And some of those words like diligence and the, the idea of making every effort is expressed several times in the New Testament. We've got to work on this, folks. So, so learn, start working on giving 100% to God every day. Even as you're driving down the road, you can be thinking about God. Uh, maybe you can put in some uh, spiritual music or, or put in some spiritual, uh, um, maybe read the reading of the Bible. You can put that in and pay attention to, to that as you're driving. I mean, think about these things. We don't always have the ability to carry our Bible around and be reading it all the time. But you know what? Take one verse a day and memorize it and then think about it all day long. What does that mean, and, and how does it apply to me? I mean, that's a start, folks. I'm just suggesting a start. So do what you can, and do something for others. Just get to heaven, and give a 100% effort, and you'll get there. 
I mean, that, that's kind of like what God said. You put forth that effort. I mean, I mean, it's going to be there. You know, Second Peter chapter 1, 5 through uh, 12 gives you that concept. As long as you do these things, you'll never stumble. But if you stop doing these things, you're, you're blind and short-sighted. And, and so, these things, and the uh, Lord will be with another lesson, and just remind you, do something for God, okay, and you're going to be in uh, good shape. There, bye-bye for now.